Okay, so um, I'm not going to do like a, a full long spiel. I just wanted to, uh, you're a very well informed crowd. So I'm just going to put up some things that have struck me very recently. This is, this is, this hit me very hard when I read this. This is from a Pew study from last year. Um, when Americans gauge the kinds of things that would influence their faith in scientific findings, the verdict is clear. Open public access to data and independent committee reviews inspire the most confidence in scientists and boost their trust in research findings. Um, and that's not just an opinion, that's from asking many, many people. And here's the figure that backs that up. Um, and that is, that is a lot of people saying that they care about open data. And what's really striking about this is that the public isn't saying, I plan to go and reanalyze this data, or I want to really dig into the article because largely that's outside of their skill set. What they're saying is because the data are available, I am more confident that this is a good study because I know that somebody else out there can go and check it. And, and I think if we're, if we're at the end of 2020, looking back and thinking, okay, what could we do differently to restore trust and to build trust in the scientific effort, then this is one very clear signal that's been sent. And then the other thing I want to show is from a very recent paper by Brian Nozick and Soderberg Nerenton, uh, which came out uh, about three weeks ago now. Um, and they did a survey of researchers and they asked when assessing the credibility of a preprint, how important would it be to have each of the following pieces of information? This is the sort of top half of their figure five. And they asked about all sorts of things like these are the, the things that came out well on top of the sort of open science categories and further down there are the more, um, the more usual um, forms of credibility such as they knew it was going to be published in a particular journal or they knew it had been seen by particular editors and so on. But here, the thing that, two things that really come out on top are study data and scripts, uh, the idea that someone's tried to independently reproduce it. And these really boost people's trust in the value of the preprint. So just having the data available, knowing it's available, makes a big difference to how people view the, the reliability of the literature. And if we're going to boost people's trust in the literature, clearly that's what we need to do. So what can we do to promote open research data? Um, we need to do two things. First, we need to lead authors through the data sharing process. It is often far from clear what you need to do as a researcher, what data sets need to be shared, where they need to go, what format they should be in. And then at the end of the process, some stakeholder, institution, a journal or a funder needs to go back and compare what should have been done with what the authors actually did and provide some sort of certification that they have done what we asked them to do. Human beings can do this, data curators are around at plenty of journals and in other contexts too, but it's not, a, it's not an easy job. It takes 20 to 40 minutes per article, uh, involves a lot of back and forth. And so it's very hard to scale up to tackle the millions of articles that we would need to do to really produce uh, a body of literature every year that is backed up by research data. So this is why we need AI. AI is very good at text recognition. It's very good at um, passing through and working out, um, spotting particular patterns of text. And so this is why we can harness AI to do this kind of work. And so to assess open data for a particular bit of research text, let's say we're focusing on an article, we need to ask first which data sets are associated with this preprint or with this article and which of those data sets have been shared. And both of these can be easily assessed with natural language processing. So this is a sentence describing data collection at day four post-infection. Animals were euthanized and lungs were collected for quantification in the viral RNA, that's one data set. Infectious virus titers, that's the second data set. And lung histopathology, that's a third data set. So three data sets are being described in this sentence and ideally the authors would provide all of them. Here is a sentence describing data sharing wing images generated by the study available through Data Dryad. Uh, and they give a DOI. So both of these can be assessed with NLP and then we need to give the authors a report on what they need to do with their, um, 
with their data. So now um, I am going to switch over to Chrome. Um, and so this is a, a study um, that's uh, been pulled down from BioArchive and it uh, works on, it looks at mice, it's part of the COVID body of literature. And the first data set that we're gonna come across in here, this is data series user interface. This is one is um, plasma being collected and that kind of data is what's known as a sample table. So that is when you collected something, you need to write down when you collected it, the time, the day, where you were, all that sort of thing. So that is, people coming along afterwards can look for time of day effects and so on. And um, the next data sets down here, samples were acquired on a BD LSR Fortessa and analyzed with Flojo analysis software. That is flow cytometry data being collected there. Down here, um, reaction was stopped the addition of S2SO4 and absorbances were measured by a pro plate read. And so that is uh, an immunoassay. And there's at five uh, is here with um, the microscopy data set. This is imaged by a high content fluorescent microscopy system. So that's an image. And then the subtype is microscopy. And this panel here uh, is primarily um, aimed at uh, authors. It's, uh, it's very flexible in how it can be used. But what it basically lets people do is provide a name for the data set and a DOI. At the moment, we're not going to be giving authors this data set or giving people direct access to the data set into this UI. We will be uh, sending people who give us their articles to check over this sort of thing. So here's the data sharing report for that article. And so we've spotted the, the data sets they have. There's plasma data being collected. Uh, we spotted, say, in telling them it's a sample table. Is flow cytometry data set, is your immunoassay, is your microscopy. And then we're going to give them advice on what they should do with it. So here is a sample table, and then we give them a list of the most suitable repositories. And as part of data series, it's not quite visible yet, but we've developed um, a dynamic repository recommender that takes the context of the type of data being collected, the subject area, the taxon. This is mice, so that affects the repositories we re recommend. Um, the journal, any preferences, the journal, the article's been submitted to, any preferences of the funder, any preferences of the institution the authors are at in terms of which repositories they list as their favorites. And um, all those are taken into account, and that's what we use to recommend repositories to the authors. And so here, uh, flow cytometry should go, for mice, it should go on immunology database analysis portable. And uh, the immunoassay data should go on plasmid, I, plasmid. And the microscopy data should go up on the image data resource and all the cell image library. And um, I am going to uh, go back to my slides. Um, so this is the, the workflow we're working on at the moment. So authors are going to send articles to data here. We'll check them over. And there will be a bit of hand curation at the moment because the AI is still learning. Uh, we'll send the report back to the author as the, if there's a lot that they need to do, as in that article. Just report I just showed you, then the authors can share more data sets. We will reassess it. When all the data are shared or we've reached a, a consensus, then we'll provide a data series certificate saying um, that all the data have been shared. Or And it will also function um, as an online version of the data accessibility statement. And we'll have its own DOI so that it can be assessed and referred to from outside. And that's all I have. Um, so if you're interested in this, please get in touch, tim at datacity.ai.